Mark Perillo, president here at the Kauai Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope that everyone can see me. Um, thank you first and foremost uh, to IT Kauai for, you know, once again hosting this webinar. Um, really couldn't do it without their support. Um, if you have any IT needs, um, I really would encourage you to reach out to them. Um, they're, they're really great to work with um, and we're very grateful for their help. Um, I want to thank um, Pat and Anne Hashisaka. Uh, well, <laughs> sounded like you guys were married. Um, Pat and Anne um, who um, help lead our member services committee. Um, they're coordinating all of these member webinar connect series um, and we're very grateful for their help. Um, and finally, I want to thank Carol and Anna uh, from the chamber staff who have been uh, working night and day um, despite not being in the office during COVID-19 um, for the most part. Um, that has changed actually. Our office is now open um, again from 10 to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, and so if you are interested in stopping by, we encourage you to make an appointment um, so that we can ensure social distancing. Um, so please just shoot me, Carol or Anna, an email and we can set up a time. Um, with that, it is my great pleasure to turn it over to Cheryl Stiglmeyer, um, who will be kicking off this particular webinar on resiliency, such an important topic for our community, um, and I'm so glad to see so many people joining us. Um, Cheryl is with um, the Office of Continuing Education um, at KCC, but is a former chamber board member um, and very active with our committees at work as well. Um, and so Cheryl, I will hand it over to you um, to get things started. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mark. So we are so excited and we're so absolutely blessed to be able to have this webinar today. As we know, with everything that's going on in our community and um, just nationally and internationally, it's so important to talk about resiliency and the things that we can do um, as a community, as individuals to be able to build up our communities, right? So um, we're absolutely blessed to be able to have um, two, three individuals be able to speak with us today about some of the things that we can do, that um, we can do as a community, that we can do for our families and um, with our businesses. Um, we have Kauai Planning and Action Alliance um, Alice Luck, as well as Nanny Apala, who have been working tirelessly to work on the um, Kauai Resiliency Project that we've got on our island. And they've been doing so many wonderful things, um, coordinating some panel discussions and being able to offer some drive-in movies. Um, but there's so many other things that they've been doing. So, and then we also have Melissa Warwick and Melissa Warwick McFerrin, and she is with Kukui Grove. Um, she is the specialty, uh, specialty leasing and marketing individual, um, but she's also one of the Kauai Planning, no, no, I'm sorry, she's also one of the Kauai Resiliency Project businesses um, that's working with KPAA. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Alice to be able to tell us about what the project is all about and what KPAA is doing for our community. Welcome, Alice. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for that wonderful introduction, Cheryl. And thank you for all of your support for um, the webinars that we do. Um, we have one coming up uh, in, next, uh, in two weeks on uh, the 6th. We're going to have our next webinar, so I just want to give a quick plug for that. And Cheryl's been so instrumental in helping us put those together. 
And I want to thank Mark uh, for this wonderful opportunity and everybody else at the chamber. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to kind of switch gears and to um, communicate with the business community and to frame what we're doing with the Kauai Resilience Project um, in a way that resonates with the interests of the business community. So it was a little bit um, of a switching of gears um, for us uh, in terms of uh, what we were uh, prepared to present today. Um, preparing for you. And um, so I'm just going to start, uh, share my screen and give you a, a brief overview of the Kauai Resilience Project, um, which is one of our two main initiatives in Keiki to Career, uh, which is a birth to age 24 continuum uh, initiative that looks at the entire uh, continuum of youth supports on island. Um, we've decided to focus on youth resilience um, because of the very troubling statistics uh, that came out of uh, the 2017 and now 2019 CDC survey of uh, high school youth in Hawaii. Um, in uh, 2019 in Hawaii, 10% of high school youth reported having attempted suicide in the previous year. 35% um, of high school youth reported feeling sad or worthless for more than two weeks at a time in the previous year. 13% reported being cyber bullied. 42% um, of high school students reported being on their screens for three or more hours a day for non-schoolwork purposes. Uh, and 17 report uh, not having any stable positive relationship with an adult. Um, that last statistic is from 2017. So these are the statistics that we're looking at in the Choir Resilience Project. Um, and in our Keiki to Career Leadership Council and uh, that we're keeping an eye on as our indicators of um, on Kauai, uh, how, you know, whether or not we are, we are moving the needle with what we are doing. Um, these statistics from this CDC survey called the Youth Risk Behavior Survey were the main impetus behind the um, creation of the Kauai Resilience Project. And that happened in uh, uh, 20. Uh, 19 just last year we launched that uh, project um, we also it's it's incumbent on, upon us to also talk about the impact of COVID on youth there's a disproportionate uh, uh, impact uh, of COVID on youth as compared to adults uh, huge disruptions to their lives um, obviously uh, having to to go on school go to school online now um, not being able to see their friends at a critical time in their life where they relate, when relationships are so critical to their development, their social emotional development, as well as their cognitive development. Um, and so students today may face a loss in earning potential as a result of the learning loss from COVID. That's what they see with other pandemic, other uh, major natural disasters and the long-term um, implications of crises such as this. Uh, COVID is hastening the pace of automation, uh, which was a trend that we were already seeing in the economy, um, forcing us as well as our workforce uh, to adapt more quickly. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the future is, is uh, somewhat uncertain um, and it's going to require a greater adaptability to crisis situations. Um, and so this is where uh, the topic of resilience and how do we build resilience in youth is, is so key. Um, so we, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna hand it over to Nanny, who's gonna talk about our youth focus groups, um, which we did uh, leading up to the launch of the Kauai Resilience Project in uh, 2019. Aloha, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so in 2019, we convened um, multiple youth groups in high schools, middle schools, and after school settings. Um, and we interviewed experts in the fields as well. Um, we spoke to school principals and counselors, and we also met with Kauai leaders. And some of the things that we found um, during our youth focus groups um, is that Kauai needs to build more protective factors around our youth. Um, and young people need to learn more life skills and social emotional tools, so things that are listed on your screen right now. Um, so we've heard from our youth directly that they felt that Kauai is no longer for them, that they feel left out. 
um, that they are not welcomed in um, areas in our in our island. You know, some of the places that they used to frequent um, or things that we, because I grew up on Kauai, um, that we were privileged to to explore, um, have been closed off due to you know instances that from our visitors, I must say, um, that forced them to no longer have access to those areas. Um, and so when we spoke to our youth, they also had issues with stress, how they spend their time, their I, what Kauai looks like for them, um, their use of technology. Um, you know, a lot of them spend a lot more time indoors um, uh, using their games and things like that to pass some of their time. Um, you know, they worry about finances. Um, and what's interesting about this is that they worry about their families, you know, and how their parents can, um, you know, they see their parents stress. It's something that they are very aware of and that too causes them stress. Um, you know, the role models in their lives, um, mentors, you know, some of them feel that they do not have that um, person in their lives. And also the stereotypes of teens, you know, we, we seem to think that teens don't care about much about their space and I'm not talking for everyone, but this is just a, a theme that was um, consistent throughout all of the different groups that we've convened um, that, you know, they have a voice and they want to contribute. And I think that it is up to us to um, rally those needs and to support them as well. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, so, um, so we did the focus groups, we looked at the research, um, and we looked at the statistics, and we decided to approach this issue by going upstream, um, which is a, a way of saying, um, looking at uh, prevention and looking at um, the factors um, that contribute to things like youth suicide, but um, looking at prevention and building the resilience factors and the developmental relationships that are so key to ensuring that no person, no young person ends up in a, in a crisis situation. Um, so this is uh, some of the initial founding members of the KRP, the Kauai Resilience Project. Initially when we launched, we had 14 partners and now we have 30 partners. And here are all of our partners. Um, we've got several in the business sector. We've got um, Gather at the table and we're working with KGEFCU and um, HMSA, uh, Wilcox, uh, Fujita Miura. Um, and of course, uh, we have Melissa Warwick um, on the call today who is gonna speak from the business perspective, um, why she got involved in the KRP and uh, we also have HCF, uh, who's a, a wonderful supporter and was instrumental in the, in the development of the KRP. Um, as, and we have, uh, let's see, who did I leave out? Uh, AT&T, American Savings Bank. Um, so we have several business partners who are uh, working with us and collaborating with us to, to uh, look at how they can uh, help to build youth resilience on island. So, um, what is resilience? Um, I thought it was it would be good to uh, to include a slide about how we're defining resilience because this can mean kind of different things in different contexts. Um, a lot of people talk about it in the context of climate change and environmental issues. Um, some people talk about it in terms of COVID and the pandemic and what resilience means for this island. Um, it's it's just a it's a real buzzword right now, resilience, and it's something that we're really focusing on is. Um, how do we uh, overcome adversities like this? Um, how do we bounce back? How do we cope with the, uh, uh, the stress that we're all under right now? And so um, when we're looking at resiliency from a more individual uh, standpoint, in terms of building individual resiliency in our youth, um, it is that ability to bounce back from adversity, to cope with stress and pressure, to learn from your failures because we cannot prevent uh, our youth from experiencing failure. Um, and so the key there is that they learn from their failures and they have the confidence to move forward and apply um, what they've learned from that experience. Um, and, uh, you know, now people are also talking about um, the definition moving from just bouncing back to bouncing forward. 
um, toward a stronger community. And that's some, something, some language that we're kind of hearing in Kauai right now is how do we take advantage of this opportunity? Um, and if you look at crisis in a certain way, it can be an opportunity. How do we take advantage of this to become stronger as a community, to become less reliant on tourism, to um, become more resilient um, and really spark transformative change uh, on our island? Um, and then when we talk about resiliency, we're also talking about the skills to adapt to changing conditions successfully. Um, the research talks about it as an interaction between the individual knowledge, skills, and attitudes and one's environment being the presence of protect, a protective, nurturing society, family, school, community being critical elements in that nurturing society. And without those, even if you have a, a, a great knowledge, skills, and attitudes, you might not be able to be resilient in the face of a crisis. Um, you, it's really the interaction between those two things. Um, and so, you know, you see a lot of parallels between community resilience and individual level resilience. I think they're innately tied together. Resilient youth um, contribute to resilient workplaces as employees, as consumers, and as eventually as leaders in those workplaces. So we can't talk about island resilience uh, and resilience on Kauai as a whole without talking about building individual level resilience in our youth. Um, we use the work of the Search Institute as the foundation for the Kauai Resilience Project. So I just wanted to give you an overview of some of the work of the Search Institute. Um, this is their framework for developmental relationships. And these are the five elements of a critical developmental relationship between a youth and an adult that is absolutely necessary for that child, that youth, developing, uh, positive, developing uh, uh, in a positive way, making the successful transition to adulthood, and developing resilience. And so um, these five elements are, are critical, and maybe you know, they get them in different places from different, uh, different people, um, but you know, they, they have to have um, these things in order to, to make that successful transition and, and become resilient and, and strong adults. This is the work of the Search Institute on developmental assets. These are the external assets that are necessary for positive youth development. And um, next I'll talk about the internal assets that are necessary. Um, I'm gonna point out some of the ones um, that are the most relevant for businesses, for the business community. Um, for example, uh, caring community, young person experiences, caring neighbors, um, the community values youth, the young person perceives that adults in the community value youth. Um, youth as resources, young people are given useful roles in the community. Um, safety, young person feels safe at home, school, and in the neighborhood. Um, adult role models, uh, positive peer influences, um, creative activities. Um, these are some of the things that I feel like are the most relevant to the business community in terms of um, what can businesses provide uh, that might meet some of these, these, this criteria that might help youth to develop um, into, uh, into healthy and stable adults. Um, these are the internal assets that are necessary, uh, broken up into four areas, uh, their commitment to learning, their embrace of positive values, their social competencies, and their positive identity. And these are all found online at thesearchinstitute.org if you um, are interested in learning more about the work of the Search Institute. Um, so I see uh, a lot of parallels with uh, the how the how um, how the business community might define um, resilience and and how um, the Search Institute defines uh, positive youth development and resilience and the and the focuses uh, on both of those. Um, this is from taken from the Global uh, Business Coalition for Education. They published a report uh, on youth resilience. And um, so I, I thought that it was uh, really fitting for the, for the presentation today and, and really um, hit the nail on the head in terms of articulating the business case for um, supporting youth and, and building youth resilience because of um, the end goal, which is to have a, a strong, stable uh, a workforce, a capable workforce, one that's able to um, weather the challenges that we're seeing now um, and adapt. And uh, so this is the uh, six elements that they identified in that report. 
um, that they, they define as resiliency. And so I thought there was a lot of overlap between this and the work of the Search Institute. Um, so some of the reasons that, uh, some of the considerations that, that the business community might, might understand in terms of prioritizing supporting youth, 22% um, of our population, according to the census figures, is under the age of 18. That's about 16,000 people. Um, you know, your employees and their families, you might have experienced, have, have had experience with an employee that's struggling with um, their children and supporting their children through this crisis. Um, mental health is something that we are all uh, keenly aware of, I think, right now, and we're all under stress and pressure um, of varying degrees. Um, that might have impacts on your employees' families. Um, you know, you might uh, have employees that are struggling with um, substance abuse as well as a way of coping, as a coping mechanism to deal with the stress. Um, you know, you might have employees that have experienced trauma as a result of COVID. Um, and so, you know, these are some of the, th the reasons why I think it's so key, it's so important to uh, take into consideration how can we support our youth right now? Um, because, you know, your employees most likely have families uh, and uh, it, we're all dealing with these issues to one degree or another. Uh, youth as consumers, they might be a large portion of your customer base. Um, if not, uh, when they grow into adults, they're going to be your consumers. They're going to be your customers. Um, they're also going to be your future employees. They're going to be the future workforce that you draw upon on Kauai. And uh, they're going to be the future homeowners in the county, the business owners, the entrepreneurs, the, uh, your employees, and they're going to be future taxpayers. So we want to have a strong uh, county. We want to have a strong tax base to draw from to support uh, uh, infrastructure, to support social programs, to support all of the other costs that go into county spending. And so we're going to need a strong, uh, capable workforce. We're going to need a, a healthy, uh, productive um, uh, adults. And um, so I think that that's uh, another reason why um, supporting our youth and seeing them as, it's, it's a cliche, but seeing them as our future uh, is so key. Um, we want a vision. We see a vision of a Kauai that's more independent of tourism, starts with preparing our youth to fulfill their potential to become stable, well-adjusted adults, capable of contributing to Kauai's economy, bringing creative problem solving to some of our island's challenges. They are our most important resource. Uh, I thought that this, uh, this quote from uh, the report that I mentioned um, was so interesting, and so I thought I would just include it. Um, the future of work is uncertain. The fourth industrial revolution, which speaks about uh, automation and artificial intelligence, um, is set to fundamentally transform the way modern societies are organized and technological advances, especially in artificial intelligence and automation, may lead to serious job displacement and skills shortages. It's estimated that by 2030, more than half the world's 1.6 billion youth will not have the necessary skills or qualifications to participate in the global workforce. If youth are not able to adapt to the fourth industrial revolution, the consequences will be dire for them, not only for individuals, but also their families, their communities, and wider society. So this report mentions four categories of skills that are critical for the new economy. Workforce readiness, soft skills, technical skills, entrepreneurship, but then they mention a fifth skill, and that's resilience. The fifth skill will encompass the abilities, the knowledge, the attitudes that will enable youth not only to bounce back from adversity, but to bounce forward towards a better future. Cultivating youth resilience is critical. So um, we have uh, uh, our action plan at the KRP has four different elements. Um, one is committing to the movement of building protective factors in all of our youth. And um, we'll talk a little bit later about what that looks like in terms of our 10 tips to build youth resilience. There's something everybody can do there to support youth. The second is creating safe spaces for young people to gather on evenings and weekends. The third is teaching teens and preteens life skills or resilience training in school and after school. And the fourth is um, to ensure uh, that young people have access to after school opportunities, 
um, while taking into consideration removing barriers like fees and transportation. So I'm gonna hand it over to Melissa, who is going to talk about her perspective uh, as, a business, uh, as a business owner um, and also a leader of a nonprofit for youth, uh, the Hawaii Children's Theater. Uh, she's gonna talk about her, her experience as a member of the KRP. Hi. Um, first of all, yes. So I just wanted to correct my title there. Our general manager is David Sosner. I'm actually the manager of specialty leasing and marketing at Kukui Grove. And in that role, um, a lot of my job is related to community, whether it's support of the community businesses and entrepreneurs through specialty leasing and nonprofits and also working with the community on community events. Um, I got involved with Kauai Resilience Project about a year ago, and I can't say enough great things about this team. I think it's really given me new ways to think about what I do, and sometimes some reinforcement and some backup to say, oh, why do I think that's important? But this is why. And also too, it gives us um, community engagement resources, um, new relationships. And so what I've been finding is since being involved with KRP that I formed new relationships we didn't have before. Um, some of the things that we do at Kukui Grove really relate to the safe places to gather after school and on weekends, and also some of the after school programs. So over the past couple of years, we've transformed into more of an experiential center from a retail only center as been the future of retail, but also really getting to know um, those who do this work in the community. Um, here we have Bandwagon Kauai, which has done some really amazing work with music, um, Aloha Dance, Premier Martial Arts, as well as Robotics, and Kumu Kapu is currently on hiatus, but Hula. And with COVID-19, the Boys and Girls Club has been doing a program for students during the day, also when they're doing distance learning. And for me, the big lesson is collaboration. I really appreciate this opportunity to interact with different members of our community that are in different areas than I am in, in uh, property management, that I get to learn about, you know, why these things are so important. And what I would say is one of the things that, that's been really cool are like partnerships. Last year, we did the family fun day during fall break. Um, this year, unfortunately, we can't do that, but that collaboration between the different agencies, Haleopio and DOE. But one thing I just like to highlight for you that is a learning for me is involving youth and valuing them in terms of participation. So two years ago, um, the student government and Kauai High approached me and they were volunteers on the annual back to school bash and Kauai High kids, they approached me and said, hey, we wanna hold a homecoming parade. Could we do it here? And I've been doing events for about 20 years and I said, you know what? You will organize it and we will support you. And I think that was really important to work with them. Um, they had Davina Plowman, and we worked together to do the parade and to see the look of accomplishment on their faces to say, hey, we did this. So it's not just creating things for youth, but also engaging youth in the process. And as a result, that's developed a relationship. So then we did with the island-wide student government. And then even in COVID-19 recently, they contacted me and we met and they said, oh, how can we do Halloween this year? How can we do homecoming this year? And right now we're formulating a plan for a virtual homecoming for Kauai High that they're working on with us supporting and also looking at, you know, having a teen voice and some of the activities happening. So I hope that collaboration will grow 
And I just put an open invitation out there. There's a lot of ideas and these things come together because people are involved and they dedicate a little bit of their time to do it. And so, and it, and it's fun to relay some of the skills and things that, you know, so I really encourage people when it comes to, to mentoring and connecting and, and supporting, because it makes such a difference. Um, it is a challenging time during COVID-19. We're, we're trying to work out Halloween and the holidays. So, but with the participation of youth and also, you know, these are our current customers, but also future employees looking at training. So this is an open invitation. If anyone wants to collaborate on anything here, um, we very much welcome it. Um, something coming up, I don't know if Mason Chalk is on the call, but he has been working with the recent grant with KPAA and Resilience Project on a climbing wall. So we're meeting on Friday, we're working on this project and we hope to have some good news about that soon. Um, Alice, did you want me to say something about the other project as well? Um, or I'm, I think I'm pretty good. So okay. let's go with that. Okay, thank you so much. And, you know, Melissa really embraces um, the, uh, the elements of the developmental relationship. And I think, you know, I'm reminded of a quote, every child is just one caring adult away from being a success. And I feel like, Melissa, you are, you are that for many kids and giving them that opportunity alongside the support for them to, to grow and to try new things and to, to um, challenge themselves in that supportive environment. So thank you so much. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over to Nanny. Thank you, Alice. Um, and I just wanted to echo Alice and thank Melissa for all of the work that she's done with us. She's been instrumental in getting a lot of, you know, these programs um, rolled out into our community. So thank you very much. And thank you for sharing your story with, with, with the group. So um, our partnership with Melissa and uh, Kukui Grove Center is a great example of how we can work together cross-sector um, in creating safe spaces for our youth and their families to gather. So in order to achieve that, um, we have to keep in mind um, to do our part as service providers and or business owners to create um, in our spaces a kind of as atmosphere that is welcoming um, to our youth and their families. So. Um, and we can definitely achieve this through collaborations. Um, so an example of what that may look like for a business owner such as yourself, or you know, um, it can be as simple as changing your staff's approach in dealing with youth outside of your building or those that visit your business establishments. Um, so with that said, as an individual and as a local business owner, um, we're encouraging you to take the pledge with us. Um, and we hope that this message is something that you can share out to your team also. Um, next slide, please, Alice. Um, thank you. So um, with the Kauai's Kids Are Your Kids um, campaign that we have, uh, we are implementing a comprehensive campaign on how everyone can help build protective factors around our youth. Um, we are calling it the 10 Tips to Build Resilience, um, easy things that everyone can do every day um, to help our kids um, assist them in building their resilience. Um, what can you do as a business owner and as a leader in, our, in your respective field and a member of our Kauai community? Um, I wanted to share a story shared with me um, by someone when we were reaching out in our community and talking stories with community members about the work that we're doing um, for the Resilience Project. Uh, during one of these talk story sessions, someone in the group shared how growing up on Kauai, he remembered um, a business owner in his community who made sure that um, to always greet them when they see them and his friends walking by his establishment. Um, and in some evenings when this business owner noticed that these kids would, you know, come home a bit late or when it got dark in the evening, he would make sure to leave his um, business, the, the front of his business um, light open for the kids. And their relationship grew to a point where the kids felt comfortable enough and welcomed enough by this business owner that they would actually talk stories 
um, and he would stay um, during closing hours, after closing hours, and you know, take the time to talk to these kids. Um, and he remembers this person specifically and feeling safe and welcomed and he felt heard and he said he felt cared for and acknowledged through these, you know, simple acts, um, what to him, you know, through this business owner. So that is an example of how you can engage with our Kikis and to build that type of atmosphere where our kids feel welcome and safe. Um, so next slide. Thank you, Alice. Um, so going back to the 10 tips to build resilience, easy ways everyone can do. Um, See, I think, can we go back a slide, Alice? Thank you. Um, so simple things such as the power of hello, you know, acknowledging that, you know, we have adults um, entering your business practice, but, you know, there are some cakeys as well, and the simplest saying hello to them. Um, the 10 minutes a day, that is listening to your child or any child um, you care about for 10 minutes a day, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, dials down their anxiety, and these are um, research-based as well, and helps children resolve their issues. Um, if you give them that undivided attention, you know, it really helps. Um, it really helps them. And then we also have our share family meals. Um, that is, of course, you know, sharing a meal with your family. You know, at least five meals together a week. Um, you put away your digital devices. Um, share conversations. Um, limit screen time, you know, at this time, it's quite hard to do that. But I think, you know, taking that time to just disconnect and um, have that time with your family is really crucial. Um, connecting with others, um, create favorite activities with your families. Uh, so solve problems with young people, help kids understand money and financial literacy. Um, these are all important and be a child's champion. So next slide, please, Alice. Um, so with our 10 tips for building resilience, uh, we've also been rolling out our Kauai's Kids Are Your Kids radio spots. Um, perhaps you folks have heard some of these. Um, we've had some ads through Kong Radio as well as HOI Media. Um, and we've partnered up with local leaders, personalities, and business owners to help us with our 10 tips message. Um, we have a short audio sample of a partnership we have with one of the local businesses, which is Rainbow Joe's. Um, and Alice will be sharing that with you folks. Aloha. This is Joe. And Bo. Of Rainbow Joe's. Bo, do you know what I like best about going to work? What's that, Joe? Seeing families come together to share quality time over coffee and breakfast. Yeah, with everything going on these days, it's important to take the time every day to reconnect as a family. When I was a kid, every night at dinner, we turned off the TV, put down our cell phones, and just talked. You know, eating together three to five times a week can significantly help children succeed in school and lead to better health and stronger families. For more information about sharing family meals, visit Kauai's Kids Are Your Kids dot com. Share the meals, share the love. All right. Thank you, Alice. So um, that is just another example um, um, in ways that you, uh, as an individual, can and as a business owner can get involved um, to lend us your voice to assist us in sharing, sharing out our top 10 tips um, in building resilience for young people. So. All right, yeah, um, you get a plug out of it and for your business and uh, you can help spread um, these really important messages about how to build youth resilience. Um, so thank you, Nanny. Um, the other thing we want to mention about how to get involved is we're doing a monthly youth contest called You Got This Kauai. We're going to start, um, I think this week is we're going to launch it and it's going to be a different activity every month that kids can do that promotes positive youth development. And um, so we're looking for uh, sponsors for that, business sponsors to donate some prizes, gift cards and stuff like that for the runners up 
of that contest, um, you can contact us um, and I'll include my contact info at the end of the presentation. Um, safe and welcoming spaces for youth. Um, Nanny mentioned that and the importance of that. Um, and I think that that's even more critical right now because youth are out of school. Well, they're off campus and um, they're spending more time out and about in the community um, with nothing in particular to do. Um, and so you can help provide a safe space for youth um, if that's possible with your, your type of business. Um, mentorship. Uh, mentorship, I think, is uh, something that um, a lot of people are interested in, but not a lot of people kind of pull the trigger and actually get involved. But I just want to promote, um, promote that as well as a really important aspect, um, particularly for older youth, middle school, high school age youth. Uh, mentorship is really critical to helping them to expand their uh, world and to see the possibilities for their future and to promote hope for their future. Um, so now is the time, I think, to get involved with something like that. There's some interesting things going on in terms of um, virtual internships that are happening across the country. And um, so that if, if a live internship isn't something that you can commit to, perhaps it could be virtual. Um, get involved with Big Brothers Big Sisters. That's a great way to be a mentor um, to a youth in need. Um, you can contact Nicole Cowan about that. Um, Kauai as a classroom is a concept that we're working on right now. Um, where we would be creating a, a web app or an app to connect um, businesses across Kauai that have opportunities uh, for youth for experiential learning uh, to connect them with families um, and check out these three uh, organizations, Global Business Coalition, Coalition for Education, Council for a Strong America, and Climb High Bridge, which connects businesses um, with uh, educators. Okay, Nanny, you wanna talk about the sticker? Real quick, we're almost out of time. Sure. Um, so real quick, um, how, how else can businesses get involved? So showing your support by indicating that your space of establishment is in support and is a safe and welcoming space for our youth. So we have um, our logo, uh, and if you're interested, um, this is something that we would like to offer you folks as well as an indicator for our youth that this is, you know, that they are welcomed. And I want to put a plug in also for uh, Mess Edge Theater. Uh, Melissa, you want to plug that real quick? Sure. Um, as one of my community projects, I sit on the board of Hawaii Children's Theater. And this is a program that's being done um, together with KPA Resilience Project, supported by the CARES Act. And they were just wrapping up a production workshop in the next two weeks where the kids learned all aspects of theater. They had been doing virtual and then they were able to do in a small group in person. This next component is really combining sharing those messages in a peer to peer way. So the 12 kids that are selected for this program, they're going to get to work with Dr. Deb Gobert and learn about some of the things that Alice is sharing now. They're going to do intensive acting training and they're going to be putting together original pieces and then working with the video team. So this is kind of exciting. I think, you know, biggest thing for me during COVID is we are modeling resiliency for our youth. And it's very tiring and exhausting sometimes for all the adults to come up with all the new ways to do things and kids are doing that too. So in this way, we're trying to make it an opportunity to get more involved with a group that mainly did live performance to do more with video and virtual and express the message of resiliency in the process. Awesome, thank you. Um, here's a few resources um, for uh, suicide uh, crisis intervention, um, things like suicide prevention. Um, I can uh, forward these as well um, if you need assistance um, in accessing any of these. Um, and then I just want to uh, put our contact info at the end there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and see if we have any questions. I know we ran over time. I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, so much wonderful information. We do have a few questions. Um, and actually just a couple comments as well. So um, Michelle, thank you. You uh, mentioned the concept of 
instead of shifting our mind mindset from bouncing back to bouncing forward. So um, excellent concept there. And um, kudos to Kukui Grove for being an open space for, um, for youth to be able to come and be able to participate in specific activities. Um, the, uh, one of the slides, Alice, that you had was from searchinstitute.org, and that was the um, slides that had all of the wonderful information on uh, being able to support our youth and also the global business, global business for education was also another one. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. Um, Michelle was asking if, um, yes, there, so we know that there's stickers to be able to show that businesses are um, in support of um, being a safe place for our kiddos. And, um, but how do they get them? How are, do our business folks get these stickers to be able to post on their doors or on their businesses? They can contact us, absolutely. It's Alice or Nanny at Kauai Network. Dot org. Excellent. Um, do you have any that might have a QR code that has great all of this good information? Uh, a QR code for the we can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, we we have QR we access to uh, the QR codes. Uh, so yeah, we can we could do that as well. Yeah, it's a good idea. Excellent. Um, another, so another question that we had was, you know, with our families being um, like key, um, playing a critical role in developing the resiliency for our island's use, what other resources, what other supports do families have access to? Let's say um, we don't have, fam let's say we don't have kids that are in school yet, or let's say they're transitioning out of school. What are some of the other supports that they might have access to? Uh, in terms of after school opportunities and that sort of thing. Um, in, in relation to just being able to build up um, the, the population of the youth, their resiliency to all these different external things that are coming at them. Um, so maybe um, resources like um, maybe they're going into school. So within mm -hmm. Department of Education, you have the um, Family Guidance Center and uh, Mental Health. Mm -hmm. The Mokihana program. Uh, yeah. Yep, Mokihana. And um, if we have individuals that are experiencing um, situations of violence, so they're victims of domestic and, and sexual violence, so YWCA might yeah, be another say. one. Mm -hmm. The YWCA is a great resource, and they're also actually going to be doing some things with youth development. They're starting a teen group. Um, I think it's, uh, they're still surveying youth to figure out which day and time works best, and it's, I think it's going to be virtual. But um, yeah, they're starting a youth group. Um, I should also mention in terms of like peer support groups, um, Life's, uh, Life's Bridges is also doing several peer support groups right now, and one of them, I believe, is for teens. Um, so that's also a great resource going on right, right now. If, if, you know, you just need a group of people to talk to, um, to help you through all of these, these changes and all of this stress because of COVID. Um, so there's, I think there's a couple for adults and then one group for teens. So well, something else that I thought of was possibly um, if people belong to church groups, there might be youth groups that the, um, when the youth get together, you know, just being able to have that face-to-face -face contact. I know it's minimal now, um, but having that face-to-face -face contact and the interactions helps to build our youth's resiliency. So um, any opportunity that we can have our youth be able to get together, be able to just um, bond and share experiences, um, that is a, a wonderful way to be able to have our youth um, become more resilient to external environmental stuff and even some of the stuff that's even happening in our homes. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. So there's that. And then there is um, one other question from Kamika is with current COVID restrictions, do we have additional places that maybe that were not mentioned um, in your presentation where the youth can, are welcome 
um, to be able to come in to be um, a place where they can hang out, to be able to um, maybe do their homework or just get together? Do you know of other places that the youth can do that? In terms of a live opportunity for, uh, not, not a virtual opportunity, but live opportunity, yeah, the, the Boys and Girls Clubs is obviously a great resource on island. Um, I think that um, we, this is, you know, a push for additional opportunities in terms of, of youth development programming. Um, it's something that, that we need a lot more of on this island. Um, uh, but yeah, Boys and Girls Clubs is a great resource. And, and I mentioned the Big Brothers, Big Sisters um, in terms of mentoring. Um, you know, unfortunately with COVID, it makes it so difficult to do something safely um, in terms of live programs. Um, Nanny, do you, can you think of anything else? Actually, this is where we're reaching out to our local businesses. Um, and we're, we're asking you folks to also let us know what can you do for our community um, if there is space for you to do so. This is something that, um, you know, one of the challenges that we have currently. Um, so one of the uh, projects that Alice mentioned earlier in terms of um, getting our youth engaged in activities um, away from the computer, um, getting them into, um, getting them out and about is the, um, you got this Kauai Youth uh, Challenge. So, you know, it's our hope that, you know, with these challenges that we roll out every month, um, it gives them an opportunity to, to join in um, and give them an idea of what, what they can do and at the same time they can win prizes. Um, and with our web um, online presence, we're hoping that the website and that platform will be where kids can gravitate towards you um, and, you know, we can provide them resources and things like this. And hopefully as we move forward, you know, we get more interest and we can keep continuing and providing these opportunities for our youth and their families. Excellent, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, there's just one final comment from Michael, um, just mentioning Kiki to Career, just Careers, CDL, and I'm not quite sure, um, child development something or commercial driver's license. <laughs> um, so sorry, um, but Kiki to Career, um, great, great um, program, like pushing our um, youth and our educators to move forward and have our youth think about their uh, careers going forward, having a, an end, not an end goal, but a goal to keep in mind as they're moving through their educational career, right? Mm -hmm. So, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice, for all the wonderful information and Nanny. Melissa, thank you. You're doing such great, great work. Um, Really appreciate all of the, the energy that you're putting towards our the resiliency for our entire island. So, and so this is this Thanks, is Mark. Um, thank you both. Um, thank you all um, for this wonderful webinar today. Um, we're just really really happy um, to showcase the work that you're doing with our business members. Uh, before we part ways, I just have a couple of announcements. Um, on Wednesday, September 23rd, this Wednesday, we have a virtual business after hours hosted by Salty Wahini and uh, Tasting Kauai. It should be really fun. Um, lots of door prizes, games. Um, it's a really just great way to, you know, let your hair down and have a good time uh, with some old friends, um, even though we can't get together in person. Um, on Monday, September 28th, we will be having another webinar, Member Connect webinar. This will be with Chancellor Daisy, um, the new chancellor at KCC. Um, because um, of COVID-19, there hasn't really been a great opportunity for him to get out there um, and meet people. And so this is a great opportunity for you to say hello to him and learn a little bit about what's going on at KCC. On Tuesday, October 26th, um, we were going to be having a webinar on health insurance. Um, and really helping people navigate um, the marketplace and the various options that are available to them um, as employers, as employees, um, or as you know, former employees who have been laid off um, as well. So very informative information there. Um, and then on Thursday, October 8th, 
Um, we have Lead Yourself to Build Culture with Sandeep Kahara, um, and that is being brought to us by Win Win Workplace Solutions again. Um, so it should be another great webinar. So thank you everyone for your time today. Um, Alice, Nani, Melissa, um, we're so grateful to all of you. Cheryl, thank you for moderating today. Um, thank you to the entire team at the chamber, the board, the staff, our volunteer leaders. Um, we really couldn't do it without you. So thanks everyone and have a great day. Aloha. Yeah. Thank you, Mark, as well. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Mahalo.